Hello. Good afternoon. Is that Bill? Yes. Um, hi, Bill. It's Jason Curtis uh, calling from South Africa. Sorry for the delay. That's okay. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. It's good to speak to you. You too. Um, I, I, did, I did speak to you a couple of years ago. I don't know if you remember back to when you were uh, doing a bunch of interviews for South Africa. Hi. Oh, you know, my mind is a little cloudy, sorry. Which is, which is to be understood. <laughs> but uh, congratulations um, on putting the, well, the, I think the, certainly some of the finest tracks from Buffalo Tom. Thanks very much. Um, an interesting time, I think, uh, obviously with Beggar's Banquet enjoying their 21st birthday and um, putting out a bunch of uh, Greatest Hits albums. So I must admit, um, I put the album... Um, on and it uh, it did exactly what a, um, what the sort of album I think is intended to do is it takes you sort of right back, doesn't it? Yeah, I know it's it's kind of scary how many years it really spans. You know how, how all of a sudden we've been around for a long time. It seems you know mm. you're getting old. <laughs> I suppose we all are. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's been my greatest lesson of this of this record is that. Uh, we have actually a, a long enough career to warrant a, uh, a best of collection that spans over 10 years. Yes, yes. Now, was I, I know that uh, when Ivor Watts Russell was uh, was still a part of Beggar's Banquet through 4ID, um, he had um, he wanted to do a whole bunch of these. Um, obviously, I think almost just showcasing um, the label's um, history to date and doing this sort of thing. But was uh, was this sort of uh, as much your idea as it was Beggar's Banquet's idea? Uh, I suppose so, yeah. It was, um, I think it was just sort of inevitable. I, I, you know, to be frank, I, I don't think I was, I was as excited about it um, as an A-sides collection as I would be maybe a, uh, a B-sides collection, which to me has, holds more intrinsic interest. But, um, I, you know, I do think it was it's something that we would have gotten around to doing eventually. Um, you know, it's it's called the best of because obviously we didn't really have major hits of any kind, so mm. it's kind of weird to be putting out a collection. But I, you know, I, I, like I said, I think it's inevitable. But the, I think the label uh, was, um, was was the uh, had the greatest drive to do it. Over, you know, rather mm. than we did. Mm -hmm. But it seems that uh, that even on the back of that, that you that you did involve yourselves uh, quite heavily with it, which I think is nice because a lot of the times it, it does get taken away from the bands and, you know, it's easy for a, um, a label to sort of pick and choose tracks. But, uh, you know, you, you you got your quotes and um, all your bits in there, which I think, you know, from a, a fan's perspective, I think is, is, is great. So it, it, it does um, it does have that additional value that, uh, you know, that you guys are, you know, that have, you have inputted uh, your thoughts on, you know, on the tracks that are included. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I think um, once we decided that we should do this, we should we figured we should kind of input in it, not just uh, string together a chronological order of, of singles and you know throw some artwork on there. I mean, we really did spend a lot of time on it for uh, for this kind of thing. So. Mm, mm. Now, where where are Buffalo Tom at the moment on the back of this? I mean, uh, as I say, Smitten. Um, came out um, that that was the last thing I saw um, that you did, uh, that released wise uh, but but how the band and 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 what can we look forward to um, well we're sort of in the back burner we are doing some some dates to uh, support this in fact we've, we've done some already in Boston and New York and um, DC area and uh, we should be getting out to the west coast next week I mean um, I mean, we are getting out, I should say, we're getting out to the West Coast, but um, beyond that, we have no real plan. We assume we'll do a little bit of Europe, um, but, um, you know, we've decided uh, after Smitten to, to kind of put the band on hold for a little while, um, and uh, this is, we're kind of keeping with that, you know, we're sticking mm. to that story. And, um, I think we'll eventually do something else, but uh, there's really kind of no plans right now as we're all doing various other projects. Mm -hmm. Obviously, away from the band, but uh, but, but musically speaking, um, as I say, is it uh, are, are you are you doing sort of solo projects completely um, as 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 artists yourselves, or as part of other collectives? 
I'm sorry, as as part of other collectors. Uh, well, as as part of other bands, or are you are you pursuing? Oh, yeah, yeah, no other band. Yeah, definitely. We're we're not really. Um, we're, we're we're you know I kind of look at this like we're brothers, and um, that will always be there uh, to kind of regroup from time to time. And, uh, you know, we can, we we all get along fairly well right now, and uh, I think we just all decide we need a break. And, uh, you know, we had come to the end of our contracts, mm. uh, you know, kind of both contracts, mm. and. Um, and, uh, you know, we just figured, well, this would be a good time to kind of reassess. And mainly family things uh, for Tom McGinnis, the drummer. He's got two, two school-age kids now. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. I've got a child of my own. And, you know, we weren't really eager to launch back into another Buffalo Tom contract. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, we're, we're all doing new musical things. I'm putting out a solo acoustic record. And, mm-hmm. and I, I hope to get a new record contract for a, a new rock band that I have called Crown Victoria. Okay. And um, Chris is doing some, some musical things as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we hope, that, we hope to do that. Well, I'd, I can remember when I spoke to you last time, it was a case of, yes, everyone was sort of at that stage where, you know, there were kids and, and houses and, you know, mortgages and all of the, you know, the the real life stuff that gets in the way and everyone was enjoying that aspect of their lives uh, so much. So, but uh, I mean, we you know, when you look back on the, you know, on the 10 plus years of, of Buffalo Tom, um, a, a good time all around though. I mean, definitely sort of a, you know, a, a time well spent, do you think? Oh, without a doubt, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't trade it for the world. But, um, yeah, I, I, it, there's, there's no doubt in my mind. I I do look back on some of these songs and wish, you know, I'd done uh, records, but wish I'd done things better or differently, uh, but that is completely natural, I suppose. Mm. Um, but aside from, from you know, specifics, I think uh, uh, to get out of uh, university and just go right into touring <laughs> and uh, tour the world a few times over, it's a pretty amazing uh, opportunity for a young man. And, um, I think, um, yeah, I, I really do think that uh, it was all a bonus, really. You know, I, I, I don't think we expected to truly to, to, to play outside of Boston <laughs> when, we first, when we first started and our mm. first tour brought us actually to, to Europe and we were headlining a, a Belgian club before we were playing uh, a headlining show in Boston. So it was, mm. um, it was an interesting thing to be able to do and to be able to kind of continually do it year after year and make a living at it was a pretty, a pretty great thing for us. Mm. Mm. And when, I mean, you know, when you look back on those, you know, on those times, which which part of it would you say was probably not the most rewarding, but the, but the time that you sort of sat back and said, okay, well, in starting this, you had one idea, it, it became something else, but this is this is what it's all about. Um, yeah, I think uh, if I understand the question correctly, I think I think um, you know as soon as we got our first record deal, um, which was at that time. You know, for our first record, we got a deal, a, a twofold deal. We got one in Europe, and then we've got one in, uh, in the States with SST Records, which for us was um, quite an honor to, to be on the same label with your bands like mm. Black Flag and Who's Could Do and mm. Sonic Youth and mm. Dinosaur Jr. And, and these bands. I mean, that was, like I said, I really did feel like everything was a bonus after, yeah. after that era. And, um, you know, so, but. You know, where it really comes clicked for us, I suppose, was um, around the time of Let Me Come Over when we really felt confident that we could go into the studio even on our own, which we didn't. I mean, at that point, we went in with Paul Coldery and Sean Slade, but we felt like we kind of knew what we wanted, and we became um, sort of more the sum of the parts of Buffalo Tom than, mm. than, the, than the individual parts, you know? Mm. Um, we became this band, and, and the band was its own animal, and it steered its own ship in a lot of ways. Uh, and we, we, we basically found our footing, you know, and, and that's when, it, that's when I felt sort of on top of the world in, in terms of artistic uh, expression. Mm-hmm. Because it always seemed to be about that. I mean, uh, I think every every band wants to, you know, have success and, and, and be, be popular, but... Um, uh, but it was almost as if um, you know you were quite happy not being the biggest band in the world. You were you were quite happy to be um, you know a bunch of guys playing you know playing music to 
you know, to people who, who really understood and bought into what you were doing. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I, I don't think that was by choice necessarily not being the greatest, band, biggest band in the world. <laughs> I think you can be a huge band and have people hanging on your every word as well. Mm. And you have to be a cult, a cult band, but I do think to be the greatest band, I mean, to be the biggest band in the world for maybe a record, you don't really have people hanging on your every word. You, you have people that have happened to see a video, perhaps. And, mm. um, so I, I would trade our, our cult success for that any day. <laughs> I, I've, I've been on on the road uh, opening. We've been on you know, opening situations for for large bands for of that year that have since come and gone. And, yeah. Um, you know, I, I I wouldn't trade it. I, I really wouldn't. But um, you know, I've been very happy that we've been able to, to kind of plug along for all these years and, and not necessarily need to sell a million records to, to live. But mm. it, it, that that isn't to say that it hasn't uh, it hasn't been a struggle. Yeah. Times, you know, so. But, but, you know, join, get in line. Everybody's got to make a living, you know. And it, who, who, who said that people that play rock music should automatically, you know, hit the lottery and, and, mm. and have to worry about things in their lives? Mm, mm, mm. But obviously in that, in that time, you learned enough about the industry to, 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 to know what, uh, you know, the, well, the, the obvious sort of pitfalls of, um, you know, of, of being in a band, being signed to a label, and, um, you know, and obviously the, the more popular you become, the... You know, to, in some respects, the the less control you seem to have over your destiny. Did uh, did that ever happen with the band? Oh, I don't. I don't necessarily agree with that premise. I, I think uh, maybe for some bands, they lose. They let themselves lose mm. control. I, I think the more the more records you sell, the more control you do have over your destiny. I, you know, I think if you let yourself uh, uh, be beholden to market forces and demands that you be out on the road to tour on a record because it's successful. I don't know, I think that's odd. It's an odd thing. I mean, you want to keep the success moving, certainly. But aside from that, uh, the more, if you sell a million records, um, you know, and you keep selling that, uh, you have a lot of control over the record company. Sure. Uh, you're making the money. So, mm -hmm. But a band like us, we were lucky to have control. Um, and I think it was because of, of a, a label like Beggar's Banker being on an independent label, even when we were simultaneously on major labels mm. in the United States or, or various territories, mm. we were always insulated from the kind of more crass mm. bottom line, uh, because Beggars has always been, if nothing else, uh, uh, respect, has, has respected the artist. Sure, sure. And I mean, when, I mean, when, when you look at, at music today, I mean, from the, the time that... Uh, the Buffalo Tom came together as a band and, and released your first album. I mean, music, I think, uh, the, the music you were playing then uh, compared to what we're hearing even on the radio today. Um, I mean, I, I think people have been saying it, um, especially in America, for quite a number of years, is that, you know, music essentially, well, popular music is in trouble uh, because, you know, what is the next big thing going to be other than, you know, the, the, you know the, the obvious sort of pop that one is hearing on the radio that, that America is looking for something new and something, you know, equally as good as the, you know, the, the level of music that, uh, you know, that I, I grew up with, um, you know, that um, I, I think, you know, the youth today just don't have, you know, I mean, they can go back and they can, sure, I mean, like an album like yours is great because they can reference that. But um, if, if Buffalo Tom aren't putting out albums, um, you know, in, in, in the nulls, um, you know, it's it's another band less. You know, in my mind, a, a quality band. You know, out there, which is a bit of a worry. Well, I suppose you're talking about. So, you know, good music always exists. It just depends where the spotlight happens to be at the time. Mm. Because when we when we started, uh, if you're talking about mainstream music, um, it sounds like you are. Mm. Uh, you know, I I think mainstream music in America has it just goes in circles. Mm. I hope I hope it'll come in circle again, but. When we started out, I, you know, I didn't listen to the radio at all. I listened to maybe just college radio up here, mm. and um, I, I just felt like I have I had nothing personally invested at all in, in, in things like MTV. Although MTV back then uh, did have some great yeah, it was great. Yes, yeah, they had they had some great programming, uh, but you know, the mainstream thing, the mainstream radio was mm. was as awful in 1980. True. True. As, it, as it is now, mm. um, maybe not. Maybe maybe it's worse than <laughs> even then. But it's, it's hard to imagine. 
you're talking about her, you know, how low you can go. Gee. But um, yeah, no, it, it did it did get better certainly in the early '90s uh, for us. Mm. Maybe not for everybody, but uh, the fact that Nirvana broke and all the good things that happened in the wake mm. quickly turned quickly turned sour. Uh, you know, I think radio and programming just uh, went for the lowest common denominator version of Nirvana and their ilk. Very soon, you had things like Silver Chair and Bush, which you know I don't mean to slag on these mm. bands, but it just to me. It's just not representative of, of the best music that was out there. Mm. Um, and that's not, I, I, I'm not speaking from a bitter perspective. No, no. I think of, you know, that there's always something better. I, now, I, you know, is, is music in a horrible state? I think it's probably, I think kids, um, if, if somebody's 18, you know, now, they've got a much, and, and they want to kind of find hipper and better, better quality music, mm. they've got a, uh, a far better disposal uh, now, uh, I'm sorry, means of the disposal now in the internet and, and things like that. Like, music is out there, you can find it. There's so much good music out there. I just mm. don't think you should be looking uh, to the radio or MTV to find it. Mm, mm, mm. And um, as I said, again, just sort of reflecting, um, I mean, I think a lot of bands, um, people perceive them to get better and better on every album uh, that they release. Um, because you know the songwriting gets tighter, you know the songs are better. What what in your mind would um, you know was uh, well is um, sort of your as far as a band is concerned your your greatest well not your greatest song because but your but your greatest um, your your most proud album. Yeah, well, I, I get I get the, the vibe actually from a lot of people that you know the, the, a band. The, any given band or musician or artist that has uh, more than, let's say, three records mm. usually has a record in the middle of their career that they that the fans think is the best and um, they will never surpass. Mm. So those are expectations you can't really worry about. I mean, for us, it was, it was definitely a let me come over. Mm. Now, do I personally think that, you know, that's the best collection of material? I, I don't. I think it has some great peaks on it. Mm. Uh, but I think uh, overall... I felt like I, specifically I became a, a better songwriter um, from what I brought to Buffalo Tom, but certainly also Chris Coleman, mm. uh, who didn't really write a lot in those early days and, and became more of a songwriter and, and evolved, I think. Uh, mm. I could chart his growth maybe because I'm uh, a little bit more objective about it, not being him, mm. <laughs> <laughs> than looking at myself. But, um, you know, I, I do think, I, I would hope, uh, if I felt like if you know, I would hope we're getting better. If I, if, I, if I felt I wasn't, I don't know if I would continue to do it. You know? mm. I wouldn't want to uh, to be uh, contributing to uh, a state of diminishing returns. Mm. Mm. And I mean, as I say, um, is it is it is it good to know that um, to say what uh, you know what Buffalo Tom achieved, um, you know, is out there for you know prosperity, and uh, I think very much. Um, is indicative of a time that, um, as I say, that um, I think everyone that was a part of it, I think, you know, with the development of the band and even, you know, even if they reference back, um, in a way, it's 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 maybe a, a good thing that, um, you know, that the greatest, well, the greatest hits are art, but um, that you do move on to other things and 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 maybe, you know, perhaps just leave it where it's best remembered or, or not necessarily. Yeah, I agree. I mean. You said a couple things that uh, there. I mean that with um, with Let Me Come Over or a record like that for for another artist, it, it, it is a product of the times and, and it's affected as much by um, you know sort of zeitgeist and the, mm. and the uh, audience's reaction to it as, as much as it is from what it's saying. I, I you know it's kind of a little bit of a cliche, but mm. it, music really is a dialogue. Yes, it, it's just a form of communication. So. Um, you know, with that in mind, it, yeah, you don't want to keep saying the same thing over and over again either. Mm. So if you said it, it, it is time to move on. And, um, I, you know, I, I, as much as I love a band like, um, um, I suppose, ACDC or something, you don't, mm. you know, I, I don't know if I want to go out and buy every ACDC record. It's just sort of saying the same thing kind of over and over again. I love you know, mm. that early, early rock song stuff, but um, you know what I'm saying? Mm. I, you know, I think... Um, you know, I'm glad that it is out there for prosperity, and uh, and, uh, and you know, but but still, it it is out there as 
sort of uh, baby pictures. So it it kind of it kind of hurts to think about that as well because <laughs> for me, you know, the Bob, you know, the fact that Bob Dylan wrote some of those songs, some of his greatest songs before he was even twenty one, mm. it's just I, I'll never I'll never be able to do that. You know, I'm yeah. Now and I still haven't written a song as good as Bob Dylan wrote before he was twenty one. So. Mm -hmm. That, that kind of stuff will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> you can't think about it, yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, as I say, I think, um, you know, I mean, it, uh, I suppose it's good to be, you know, to be critical of your own work, which means uh, I think the way I'd, I, I would look at it would be uh, Buffalo Tom was, uh, you know, was a, cha was a chapter, you know, in, in yours and Chris's life. Um, and, uh, you know, some of the best chapters um, are, are yet to be written still, which, uh, you know, in whatever form. I hope so. Hmm. Yeah, that's what, you know, the only thing kind of keep you going. Uh, you, know, you have to aspire to, uh, to, to doing better than you've already done. Hmm. Or, or different, perhaps. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. Um, you know, not necessarily uh, quantity, uh, qualitative, but it, it could be, uh, hmm. it could be just something, saying something different. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I feel like we've done that. Yeah, definitely. Well, Bill, thank you um, very much for your time. I apologise again for the delay. Oh no, not at all. Nice no, I, I, I to you. Great, and uh, well, enjoy the rest of your day. I'm going to go back and and stick on the album again, as I say. So. Um, oh great. But I'll, I'll hopefully we'll make it. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll make it down there sometime. Well, as I say, we threatened that last time, so but, but perhaps we can get you down in, in whatever guise. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Good point. Great. Thank you. Thanks so much. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.